Hey, hey everybody. Um, there it is. We are live. So I was going to say Facebook Live, but this is YouTube Live. Right. Hello. Welcome to our psychic mediumship training. Yes. This is a live one hour training that we're going to be doing. And um, we're really excited about it. Hey, you guys, as soon as you come on, if you could just say hello in the comments and yep, let check us in, below. let us know where you're watching from. Because we go to a whole bunch of different people across the world and we just like to know where you're from. So let's kind of like shoot it for about 30 seconds while we're waiting for people to come on. Um, yeah. Put your name in the comments. Say hello. If we keep looking over to that way, it's, it's because, because we, we have, have all of your comments here. Right. So I'll be engaging with you guys over here. Because we've got you here. We've got PowerPoint right. here. Christy. Hey, Christy. Okay. So, um, yes. Welcome to our live psychic mediumship yes. training um, where we're going to be going deep, 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 yes. deep. Make sure you get your notebooks ready. Yes. Because we're going to be dropping a lot of information into your brains. You're going to be writing super, super fast. Okay, so the reason that we decided to do this live training... Hey, Jess! Um, we decided to do this live training because we have trained um, intuitives and mediums over the last... Um, how long have we been working together? Like 10 years. Like 10 years, yeah. Um, and we find that there's a lot of confusing information out there. And so we like, it's been our quest to get the right information together for people. And in this training, we're, we're kind of going to give you the exact steps that you need for the unfolding process and development of being a medium. Right. Um, and so we're going to go fast. Um, it's going to be pretty awesome. So right, right. you're going to be writing like so crazy. So also, we want, to, we want to let you know that, um, well, stick around to the end because we've got a bonus tip for you yes. and we've got some other information for you at the end. So watch right. all the way through to the end where we will also be giving away a free crystal package. Um, in case you guys didn't know, we just decided that yesterday, so. Well, I like to give bonus. away free crystals and free stuff in mm. every live that we do, right. in every webinar, right. but um, this is awesome. I've got this box of crystals and it's like over, like around a $200 value and like the special dude is like this little phantom crystal quartz. Right, which is awesome. And and if you don't know what a phantom is, it's a crystal inside of a crystal. So one crystal starts right. growing and then stops growing and then another crystal grows over it. Right. And then a labradorite palm stone, which is so cool. And we've um, got a whole bunch of other stuff there. We'll get to that. The yes, end. we'll get to it later. So um, as far as why you guys should listen to us, first off, we might know what we're talking about a little bit because we've been doing this for a while professionally since 2008, um, individually since 2004, professionally together in 2008, and we've um, we've worked with over 1,800 clients, mm -hmm. over 8,000 over sessions. 8, sessions, and we do know what we're talking about because the testament to this happens to be over 365 star reviews that we've maintained over that period of time. Well, let me give you our credentials. David is a um, certified hypnotherapist, Reiki master teacher. Um, um, a certified metaphysical teacher by the National Association of Metaphysical Instructors. Um, I've got a PhD in natural and spiritual healing. One of my master's degrees is in theology. I've studied this stuff my whole life. I'm a right. certified spiritualist medium and also an ordained spiritualist minister. So it's like I vet information. And when I was a child, I was like saw spiritual, this medium right. stuff and very sensitive. And I come from a line of that kind of stuff. And so it was kind of my mission to find the right information because I found there were so many scary fear-based information out there that right. I wanted to make it available. So that is sort of our mission. Right. So if you guys have ever had any kind of experiences and you wanted to know more and wanted to get the right information, go and hit truth down below. Uh, just go comment truth. And if it really, really, really resonates with you, hit truth bomb. So there you go. Okay. So let's get started. Um, Let's first about talk about why you're here, because we find that people find us through a lot of different reasons. A lot of it is like synchronicity and almost magical. Um, why you were here might be that you already do this stuff. I saw Kimberly Renee pop on. Right. Hey, Kimberly, she's she already does this stuff. She's really an awesome medium herself. You might be here because you want to improve your skills. You mm -hmm. might want to fill in the gaps of information that you don't have. There's a lot of natural mediums out there that just do it. Right. Um, but there's a lot of information that you can fill in and. You may, you may also be experiencing a spiritual awakening. Right. Maybe some kind of a trauma or a life change has got you in that point where things are starting to open and you don't really know what's going on. So that, that might be one reason that you're here. Well, <clears throat> water. That so, might be another reason right, you're here. Right, and I need some water. Um, when you have a spiritual awakening, 
and so trauma happens to you and sometimes this can do uh, something to your psyche called the quickening of the senses and that brings you into a new a new awareness of like the spirit world and spirit stuff what happens with trauma is it sort of breaks down the barrier between your conscious mind and your subconscious and the spirit world and you're sort of boom you're connected to something that's always really been there but now you have this new awareness so that's what we call a quickening of the senses and what that brings you into is a hyper awareness of what we call the clairs okay we always start with the clairs the clairs are your tools and clair we've all heard of the clairs if you have any idea of what this stuff is at all it's the clairs clair means clear in french so basically it means clear senses so there are five clairs which basically correspond to all your five physical human senses the one that everybody kind of uh, kind of knows about is clairvoyance which is your seeing psychic seeing um and this clairvoyance and can nope. be well clairvoyance go, go ahead blah, blah, blah. clairvoyance can be in seen inside of the head or mm -hmm. it can be seen outside of the head so a lot of it's hard to um, describe to someone who hasn't experienced it because we're used to seeing clairvoyance on tv because it's the big show <laughs> um but it can happen inside the head right another one would be clairsentience or claircognizance which is basically a uh, an instant knowing where you just know something and you can't really explain right. how or why so that would be clairsentience or claircognizance where you've got that internal and that's the that's the feeling so Clear sentence is the feeling. Um, and then there's clear audience, which is you hear something. And you mm. might hear it outside of the head, or you might hear it inside of the head. Right. Then, then we have a clear taste or clear um, gustance or, right. so, or uh, savorance, I'm sorry. Both or right. Yes, gustance yeah. and savorance. Clear taste is the easiest. Yeah. Clear gustance, that's like the Frenchie, but you know what? If you want to be fancy. But if you, you want to that. savor the clear. You want to be fancy that. Or, and then there's clear scent, which is basically clear smelling, like when or, you smell. Uh, grandma's perfume in the or room. Or grandma's cooking. Right, something like that. Or a cigar is a common right. one. Which is also called, uh, what's the other word? Uh, clear uh, olfaction. Yes. Clear olfaction. So it's the uh, uh, the clear sense. Keep it simple. Smell. It's clear smell. Okay, so it's clear smelling. Clear smelling. Clear All right, smelling. moving on. Moving on. Okay. So here we've got a, um, when you're when you're doing any kind of psychic work or any kind water. of mediumship work, you have to make sure that you're coming from the right intent. This is one of the most crucial pieces and parts, is the right intent, the right Julian. purpose for uh, uh, for the work that you do. And the purpose for mediumship is to basically lift up a a spirit to the next level so that they can make the handoff to uh, when we're talking about spirit. Well, I mean, that's yeah, with go, rescue and transition. Yeah. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Right. But the purpose for mediumship is to um, show proof of life, um, show that love continues, show that the spirit world is there, it's real, that your loved one is there. That's the primary purpose for mediumship and healing, right. to and bring comfort. And it's not to show that you're magic. That's not the purpose. But I am magic. Yeah. I mean, so you, are you. You can be magic. And so are you. But the purpose of mediumship is not to, like, Study it is to like show everybody that you're magic. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna develop a lot differently as a medium and an intuitive if you come at mediumship and the psychic arts with the intent to be the magician. So the motivation should be from service, from healing, right. um, and with evidentiary mediumship, for example, which is giving evidence. Um, the when you're when you're going into this, look at the proof of life, not the ego, the fame fortune or the psychic joyride. Um, everybody's going to unfold differently and your journey is your journey. Your story is your story. And this is the problem we see people running into where they come into blocks with their gifts and fears is that they're, they're going on a psychic joyride with it. Let's do the mm -hmm. Ouija board and all sorts of problems can manifest. So we're going to kind of like roll through this. I see a big yes from Kimberly Renee. Thank you. You guys, we love your comments. Just keep commenting because we're right. going to we're going to look at some questions at the end. Yes, we're going to have a, a Q&A at the end. But really seriously, we're giving you the entire steps to developing as a medium from beginning to end and it's going to go fast. And right. then okay. So So moving on. Moving on. Can you be a medium? Yes, let's approach this. <laughs> so this, this brings up the uh, the controversy, the big right. controversy around born versus made mediumship, right. and or or psychic abilities or any of these things. And the reality is that any person's passion can surpass a natural ability. So practice, practice, practice. And uh, let me kind of explain what this means. Uh, there's a big myth that you're going to hear. Well, mediums and psychics are born; they're not made. Um. 
newsflash, we are all spiritual beings in this mortal existence. We're all made of energy. We all have spirit. We all have access to this. Um, but when David says passion can surpass natural ability, what he means is basically um, if you're born with a natural ability, you may be like, I have all these abilities, but you might not actually practice it and do something with it. Or someone, work on your stuff. Right. Someone with a little bit of passion can totally surpass someone with natural ability. And we see it all the time. They mm -hmm. really want to learn about it and they practice the skills like anything else. Right. And they surpass the person with natural ability. Here's mm -hmm. what I find advanced accomplished mediums like Mavis Patilla and um, James Von Prague will tell you that everyone can learn mediumship because they've done it and they know the steps. People that are still holding on to fear or want to feel special will tell you mediums are born and not made. And I, so I can that's guarantee... Where that, that's where that delineation right. comes in is more from ego of a person needing to feel special. So they, they go into the segregation of a born versus a made. When the reality is we're all born with it and we can hone the skill just like anything else. Right. So, And the thing about mediumship and psychic um, development is you don't want to rush. And there is no rush. Mm -hmm. Practice your skills like any other and take them a step at a time. Right. Even though we're like giving you the like commando version of unfolding yes. today. Um, you take your time. <laughs> so if this all is making sense to you, write truth in the comments. You want to see those truth? And put a truth bomb. We love truth bomb. Hey, if it's Christine. really resonating, I'm always in a rush. Ha ha. If it's Let really it. resonating, drop a truth bomb in the comments below. Yo, Sunny. <laughs> I saw her That's little bring pop up. Okay, what a so difference a day we makes. are going to oh. talk about. We are going to talk about <laughs> all kinds of things. He goes off on his like little. Lady. I do. Okay, we're going to talk about what is the difference between psychic and medium, and this gets really confusing for people. And I'm going to tell you, there's. First of all, there's various types of mediums. There's a lot of different types of which we cannot go into today because it would be hours and a hours. A whole nother. Psychic information yeah. is information that you get from person to person. Okay? It's like, it's the transmission. It's the clairs. Right. Um, mediumship is, ex you're using your psychic abilities, but you're receiving it from outside of yourself, from the spirit world. So mediumship, you're receiving from the energy that's in spirit. It's spirit to person or person to spirit. And the right. other one, psychic, is person to person. So you may have a psychic that's not a medium that just does psychic information from mm -hmm. person to person or from around them, or they pick up energy from things, but they may not pick up energy from the spirit world itself. Right. But all mediums must be psychic. Just all psychics may not be mediums. It doesn't mean they can't develop it. Right. It's just that they haven't chosen to develop that. So if that makes sense to everybody, kind of say, hey, that makes sense. And if you haven't done so yet, if you're liking this content, go ahead and give a thumbs like, up, give a like, like there. Um, and the other thing that we want to get into is the physical versus mental um, as a broad-based combination of how information is received. Everybody's got different ways to receive information and you've got the... Um, go ahead. Oh, okay. I'll let, well, I'll let you get into that one. There's two basic types of mediums and a lot of people will say I'm a mental medium or a physical medium. It's just the way that information is received. A physical medium will have more of their body involved in, in it. And a mental, mm -hmm. medium, mental medium will use more of their mind capacity. Um, people like to differentiate this, just like they di differentiate, I'm a clairvoyant or I'm a clairsentient. I'm sorry, but you walk into a room and you're a whole person and you use your whole body to sense the room. Mm -hmm. You see the room, you smell the room, you feel the room. As a medium and as a psychic, your entire body is your instrument. Right. So you're going to use sometimes physical mediumship, sometimes mental, sometimes all these different senses so I just want to like break that barrier down you don't need a label you don't need a label you are limitless and there are many many skills that you can develop and learn so and you don't even need to take a pill to be limitless just saying but wouldn't that be fun <laughs> why, would, why would you need it you wouldn't need it okay okay so there are three types of mediumship three <laughs> <laughs> three, three types of mediumship we're going to be talking about today, and these are the basic pillars or the tenets of, of mediumship, the um, the different the different branches of mediumship. Right. It's like this. Here we go. Okay, so many people don't understand this about mediumship. They just think the messaging, bringing messages from grandma. Yes, you can be both, Kimberly Renee. Um, but but save for everybody else, save your questions for okay. later, and we'll get into that in the Q and A. So it's it's like a triangle of mediumship. It's the three pillars. Um, at the top, I like to say, is healing mediumship. Okay, so the three types are message and evidentiary, rescue and transition, and 
healing mediumship. So, so healing is basically when you have um, when you have spirit that channels through you into the body, and that's the healing element. Well, let's go back to that in a minute. I want to start with message mediumship because okay. that is the uh, the big one that everybody knows about. The messages from grandma, the messages from your loved ones that have passed away. So this is what we call message messaging and evidentiary mediumship. Now, it's called that for evidentiary means you're giving evidence that the person is actually coming through to you and not just, um, oh, I feel like your grandma's here and she says she loves you and she misses you and she knows but you're how doing do I know good it's my grandma? Cool. You don't know that it's really grandma. Okay, it could be anybody. That's just a love message. Now, if a message comes in and says, hey, it's grandma and uh, or, or there's, somebody, there's somebody here bringing you some oatmeal cookies with uh, uh, with cashews in it and you're like oh well my grandma used to always make co oatmeal cookies with cashews that would be an example of an evidentiary so, evidence evidence of, of life so let me the message itself is not evidence the piece of information which is what we call proof of identity or proof of life is the evidence so when you're learning message mediumship that's an important thing to bring mm -hmm. forward is the proof and what you want to do is keep asking the person do you understand this piece of information? Does it make any Does sense? Does it make to any you? sense? I mean, I'll give you I'll give you an example. Um, once we were doing a reading for for a woman whose friends had passed away, and I saw a picture of them all going in a blue van, and she didn't know what this blue van meant. I said, Do you, I see a blue van, and you're all in this blue van. Everybody's in this blue van. She wasn't in the blue van, and she's like, I don't understand this. So I ask, Do you understand this piece of information? She didn't, and that's okay. So just deliver what you're getting as a message, as you're feeling, you're seeing, you're sensing. And the next day she called and she said, oh my gosh, I told my brother. And he said, yeah, we used to go in George's blue van every weekend and do dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. So that's what we call the proof of identity or the evidence. The message is the I love you, the personal, the phone call part. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? All right. So let's see. <laughs> How do you receive this information? So remember we talked about all of your senses, your clears. You're opening your whole self up. You're relaxing and allowing the information to come to you as you develop these senses. And we're going to show you how you develop these senses right. later. But the biggest thing is that you don't want to force it. You don't want to right. reach for it. You want to relax, get into that state where right. the information comes to you, which is honestly the easiest way for information to come in but you've got to learn and that's one of the biggest um, things with the the training is right. learning how to relax into allowing and right. creating the flow instead of forcing and creating the resistance of having to try to make sense out so of it. this is a mistake that we see people doing when they start to practice they're like I'm going to reach into the ether and pick up all the information. <laughs> right. That's too much. Then you're like you actually Stop. are closing the door and yeah. you're gonna start making stuff up too much the thing is you just relax and allow it to come to you. And okay. there's, there's enough skill building in just relaxing. Right. All right. So on to the next one. So this is one of my favorites. And um, he was jumping ahead to that this was one. I was like, jumping ahead too. I was, I was like, like, no, oh. we're talking about messages. Uh, so we're talking here about what's called rescue and transition, yes. which is basically helping a stuck spirit, a spirit who is somehow stuck in, um, in the in-between, to find their way home. Right. And um, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the rescue and transition, which is helping a spirit, lifting them up just enough so they can see who's coming to pick them up versus an exorcism. Yes. Exorcism will not necessarily help a spirit find its way home. It'll just make a spirit feel bad. Yeah. And so most people have heard of exorcism because they see scary movies, how we've got to like, you know, cast the spirit cast out. Cast out the spirit. Right. Um, it's it's different. Exorcism is the process of getting the bad energy away from you out. So basically, Which if you've comes got from fear. if you've got an un, what we call an untransitioned spirit, they're stuck. They don't want to cross over. They don't want to go home. They're lost. They're wandering around in the spirit dimension and causing causing trouble or they're you're, they're sorrowful full, sorrowful or whatever. And an exorcism is just casting them out. You're not actually helping. It's like watching an ambulance and all these people are in an accident and you just don't call the ambulance. You just like, oh, look at those people. Let's just get away. Hey, get out of here. What are you doing here? So rescue and transition is the act of you're uh, tuning into their guys, you're tuning into your guys, and mm -hmm. you're helping them find their way home. It's an act of compassion. But the problem is this is a really misunderstood phase of mediumship, but it's really, really important to understand that 
the compassion is the number one thing that you bring to this phase of mediumship. Because even if you're just deciding I'm going to be a message medium, you're going to run into this at some point because mm -hmm. you can't really separate it. Right. Um, it's, it's handing them off, being compassionate, knowing that the people that are stuck, they're afraid, they're fearful, they might even have, um, they might even be uh, angry, all these kinds of things that are misunderstood. So if you go into into spirit work with some kind of fear and like, uh, then you're not going to be very, very uh, helpful. Right. So I'll give you an example of a transition mm -hmm. um, and, and then we'll move on to the next part. So we once got a call to, uh, it was to an executive here who li lived in a big house and she was an executive of a, a casino here in town. So really high up successful businesswoman. Mm -hmm. She had a beautiful closet with like high end, like Prada stuff and like designer clothes, but her drawers kept like flying out. And like her shoes kept falling off the and so she called us and we went in and there was a gentleman who was seemed to be wealthy but like attracted to all the labels and the like luxury stuff. Right. And he didn't seem to have any sort of um idea of what the spirit world was. He didn't have a concept necessarily of the afterlife, so what he needed was something fairly generic. Right. And everybody's everybody's light is different. So whatever that spirit needs to find their way home is totally different depending on that. So, scenario or that story so basically um i kind of connected to him and sort of felt him kind of merge with me and just very lost because he didn't think there was an afterlife and so he was just attracted to the luxury things that he was in life because he seemed mm -hmm. to be a wealthy man so um as i felt him i kind of put my hands on him and sent him healing and this is where healing mediumship can come in we're going to talk a little more about this mm -hmm. and i kind of was like you know what there's somebody here to pick you up and they're going to take you it's there's a better place and these three really super generic pillars of light show up and I feel him like looking at these three very generic pillars of light looking back going is it okay is it okay I'm like go yeah and then <laughs> my like friend that, wants her closet back <laughs> like that he was done so it gives me the goosebumps yeah yes. right it was really fun so we love transition work and even though it scares a lot of people mm -hmm. if it scares you you're not ready for it right work on the fears work on the um the emotional elements that are right. still holding you back from neutrality we're going to talk more about that because that's and that's, very important that's the piece. key. So healing mediumship is the third pillar of mediumship, and that can show up in many different ways, mm -hmm. like the example I gave you, or it can show up with like uh, healers, right? Like John of God, who lives in any, Brazil. Any type of hand on he or hands on healer that uses spirit energy. Um, Jesus as a, as a used channel. healing right. mediumship. So mm -hmm. anytime you use the healing energy of the spirit world to bring healing to the physical world, you're using healing mediumship. Right. So those are the three pillars of mediumship. And messaging, together, they make awesomeness. Right. Messaging, rescue and transition, and, and healing. healing mediumship. Right on. If you are loving all of this, hit the like button below. I know I would have loved this information when I was... Yep. So if you haven't yet, hit the like button. Um, otherwise, drop a truth. And if it's really, really resonating with you and you've had experiences like this or you want to know more, drop a truth bomb. And we do want to hear your experiences because... Um, it gives us more ideas for what right. is needed, um, the problems that you're running to into out in the field. We like to hear about those issues so we can create content around it. So let us go. Hit the love button. Yes. Just do the one love of right button. Here. Just, yeah, just, just give me that. Give me that. All right. So developing your skills. Let's Here's get into the this. Three part method to developing your skills. First is sitting with intention to what we call develop or unfold. Okay, and this is the boring, boring part, but it can be really fun. Right, But right. this is the part people tend to be like. It's, it's learning how to wait and relax and let the information come to you. The other part, the second part here is to work on your fears. And then, Anything that you are afraid of, work on that first. And we're going to get into that too a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And the third part is practicing with people. So yes, the sitting, like living live people. <laughs> right. The first part, the sitting with intention, we're going to, we're going to go into each three of these in a second. The sitting with intention, you're kind of sitting with yourself. Yes. And we're going to talk about that one first. Okay. All right. So sitting work is really uh, meditation for mediumship or meditation for intuitive development. I love all these little pop, right. pop, pops that are come up, coming up on the screen. I'm seeing some of our Aussie New Zealand people. Yes. Um, so sitting for development or unfolding. So the first thing that you are learning how to do is you're developing what we call a psychic door. 
And this is really important. Very important. It's your intention to work, number one, for the highest good. Remember how we said your intention is the most important thing. And the, the second is it brings it more into your control because this particular psychic door, you get to open and close. Right. So that you're not inundated with all of this information, all the psychic information or spirit information or whatever. You get to open and close it, but you have to practice it like any other skill. So you, the, the reason for doing this kind of, you go into your sitting space, you open the psychic door, mm-hmm. is you're setting the intention that you're in that space. You're creating a structure from within to work so that your work can have consistency. You're practicing getting out of your own way. You're practicing mm-hmm. getting out of the information's way. Right. And you are tuning into what your energy feels like, your whole body, um, as opposed to someone else's energy, the person that you're reading or a spirit energy. Does that make sense? Okay. It's also bringing into your awareness that the spirit world is right here. Right. Because most of the time, we don't sit still enough to tune into even the energy of the tree that we're sitting next to. Right. So it's to get used to the idea that everything is here. The spirit world is here. It's not in this far away place that we have to get to you know, by some other means. Right. The other part is this is building up your spiritual stamina or your spiritual energy. Just like a person who is training for the Olympics, they build up their stamina, right. they build up their energy. Right. Right. Um, so the, the third thing, the third thing, I don't know what number I'm wrong. The, the oh, 24th thing. thing um, yeah. You are getting to know who your spirit guides are. Right. And spirit guides are very important for you doing the work because you're not doing this on your own. Um, there are certain special guides that you have. For example, a gatekeeper yes. or sentries or guardians, as well as your main mediumship guides. So the gatekeeper is what we call your ID bouncer. ID checker. Yeah, ID, ID checker, bouncer. Not your ID, ba- it's not going to bi- bounce your ID. <laughs> right. Denied. Um, that are sort of, you know, escorting people into yeah. your field for you to work with. And the gatekeeper is specifically there for to for to be for to be for to, for be, to, be, for to be your go-to person when it comes right. to mediumship. The gatekeeper is designed. Their entire purpose is to help you with mediumship, to control your space, to bring in your guardians, your sentries. They are your one point of contact. So when we say guardians or sentries, we have a little exercise we like to do where mm-hmm. we set up your space and we have like a sentry on all four corners and it kind right. of goes with you. And the reason for this is um, for you to to know that you're safe which is very important when you're doing any kind of this kind of work. Know that you're safe. Know that you're protected. Know that you got a team around you that mm-hmm. are making phone calls, that are connecting people. You don't have to work as hard as you think you do. Right. It's a lot easier when you have your team in place. Yes, because you're not doing it alone. Um, so doing your sitting work is also getting to know how your guides are going to connect with you. You're right. cycling through all of those senses. What do I feel like? Um, what am I hearing? What am I sensing in the room? What um, am I seeing in my mind or outside? So you're really spending time with yourself. Training. Yeah. And we're going to we're gonna definitely go into this probably in a future live training and go into right. details of how this is done. But yes. know that you have to do this work to develop. All right? Hey, Kiana. Um, so um, another thing to keep in mind are, are doorbells. Doorbells right. are basically a way for your spirit guides to get your attention. If you're going about your daily life and they've got something that, uh, that needs your attention, they're going to go, hey. Hey, hey, are you free? You right. got a minute? Right, right. So you're, you're learning how to recognize what those particular doorbells are. So the reason for all of this stuff in the sitting words is to set it and forget it. Know that you're safe. Mm-hmm. Know that you're good. And as your fears come up, uh, you're going to tweak them along the way. You're going to look at them. Right. Okay. Um, also, it's to set your office hours. Because yes, for definitely. me as a child medium, I didn't know that I had any control over this. And so it was just, I would be like with the covers over my head, like scared to death. And right. the toilet would flush in the night and I'd be like, oh. Um, the toilet's a demon. No, no our not. toilet was one of those where the water pressure was funny. It would just kind of like. It would sound like a demon. It wasn't a demon. It wasn't a demon. It just sounded like water. So another thing is to. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut off your story. You got a story. But for me, it would be like this open door and I didn't realize that I could close it. So when I learned my craft, it was like, no, my office hours are this. The the spirits or whatever can wait. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I need to sleep and I need a normal life. Right. And some of these spirits have been waiting thousands of years. A couple days isn't going to hurt. So it just, it depends on on your work too. So you do have office hours. We've met many, many people that are like, I can't stop it. It has to be open. I have to, you don't. You're a human. You're here to live a normal life. Um, It's very important that you have boundaries. Right. um, Because you have to live a normal life. 
Another um, element to this is learning how to get your information and the recognition of the difference between mediumship information, spirit information, and psychic information, right. people information. It's going to feel different. For instance, mm -hmm. when you're receiving medium information, and this is not a hard and fast rule. No, it's a guideline. It's a guideline. So when you're having mediumship information, for me, it'll feel like I'll feel a different kind of energy that comes into me mm -hmm. and blends and melds with me. Um, that'll feel different and I'll be like oh I feel this energy it's very electric or it's very slow but heavy but feels mm -hmm. very comfortable or I feel like I'm really tall or oh my gosh I feel like I'm a football player all of a sudden right. so spirits um, have a really good uh, it's easier for them to connect energetically and let you feel what they feel like so that's that's one way they communicate so that would be mediumship information or they might be showing you pictures on a green screen but you'll it'll feel different than psychic information which is just me going oh i feel like david's you know what i mean it's not always super easy to differentiate right. and these are subtle energies that we're working with so you're looking at subtle shifts and changes and you get to recognize these through practice for instance someone might pick up psychic information from a sitter a person who's there for a reading and believe that it's mediumship information but they're just picking up on the fact that the person misses their grandma mm -hmm. uh, and they have a, a piece of information it's not necessarily mediumship it might just be from the person's psychic feel right and this is also one of the key inf or key reasons that we set up this construct to have a gatekeeper to have somebody that can connect you with the spirit um, information the mediumship information so you can recognize the difference more clearly because you don't have to know you just have to know who to who to call who to talk to so that's why you do your sitting work so you can uh, work on the clears you can cycle through your senses and look for discernible shifts in your energy that are mm -hmm. different than your own energy so it's yes. really getting to know yourself your body your energy and your senses um, and it's important to let your imagination uh, go wild if yes. you want and create yes, scenario yes, because yes. Imagination is the gateway to developing the faculty for connecting to spirit. Um, you're going to be seeing, you're going to be seeing symbols that come in and different things, and you're going to write them down. Um, as you do your sitting work, it's important to have a journal. Yes. And write down in your journal. I saw a rose, and I Even, saw a rose again. This rose might be a symbol that's a shortcut. Right. Um, to let you know a certain thing, like a rose means a grandmother is here. Mm -hmm. Even I'm, if it doesn't make any sense in the moment. Write it down anyway. Right. So part of your sitting work is to develop your own personal encyclopedia of mm -hmm. psychic symbols. Or some, shortcuts. Some of those might be particular to you. Like every time you see a horse, it means a certain thing. Right. When you see it in a reading, a horse might mean something specific for that person. But because you've seen it so many times in your practice, in your sitting work, you're going to know a different feeling about that horse that it means something specific right. for them. So it really is taking the time to learn the symbols and to develop your own encyclopedia right. so if this is making sense to you write truth yes. down below if it's really resonating bomb, or you've had bomb, personal truth experiences bomb. or had an epiphany today write truth bomb all right we're gonna and be sure bomb. to hit that like button if you really like the information hit like subscribe if you haven't yet because we've got even more information coming in does this mean the same for always seeing uh, and and oh we got numbers that, yes, it's quite possible, Kiana. Um, we'll talk some more about that. Truth bomb. Oh my gosh. Kimberly Renee, if you have a truth bomb emoji, even better. Wow. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, so the next part is removing your fears. Part two of developing as a medium or a psychic practitioner. Removing fears. I cannot stress how important this part is. And this is the part people skip. Why? I don't know. So if you want to be Van Helsing... Because everybody wants a shortcut. If you want to be Van Helsing and you want to be badass, you need to do this continually, okay? If you Constantly. want to be good, don't skip it. The real spiritual work does not always feel spiritual. Right. That's a truth bomb right there, okay? In fact, most of the time, the real spiritual work does not feel spiritual. That right. is when you're down in, in, your, in your down and dirty in your own mm -hmm. shit and you're going through it. I said a bad word. Okay, but that's okay. <laughs> Anyway. So it's important as a, a practitioner that you are developing spiritual awareness. Um, you're working on your sense of ethics and your responsibility for the information that you come in. Because what we see are mediums start working too soon. Before they've worked on their issues. Yes. 
Um, the problem with that is that their fears become personified. Their fears come up in the reading. They color mm -hmm. their readings with their own fears and their own stuff that they haven't worked on. And while it may be a colorful reading, it gets in the way. So your job is to be as neutral as possible. Do we got Crystal Fuentes in Absolutely. the house? The ladies coach is here. Um, while you can... <laughs> All right, so anyway, old school. This is a very old school thing, and you're going to see it in the movies and all of this stuff. This is nothing new, but this is the most important part of developing as a sensitive. You have to wax on and wax, wax off. Wax on, wa wax off. The reason for that is because the shaman, the person doing the training, the, uh, the um, Miyagi, yeah. um, what they're doing is they're waiting until you have done enough of that groundwork to where you can go into this and, and it becomes effortless. Well, what you're doing is you are developing emotional and mental stability. And maturity. So when you're going into any kind of these higher uh, spiritual arts, you need to have emotional and mental stability. So mm -hmm. when you are feeling your fears come up, doing any of this stuff like, oh, that's a creepy, I feel a creepy spirit. How oh my awesome. gosh, there's fear. That How means, awesome. guess what that means? You've got stuff to work on. Because it, that's telling you exactly what you need to work on. So you remember like Batman and he goes to the mountain and works with Ra's al Ghul and he goes through all the like scary tests and, you, and Dr. Strange goes to the weird place and they go through all these tests and mm -hmm. they, they face their demons. That's what you have to do. Um, if you want to be good, if you right. want to be terrible, then don't do that. Right. And some, um, some things to watch out for when people go through these kinds of things before they're ready, before you've actually worked on your fears, is the inundation effects. Right. Some of those inundation effects are nausea, migraines, um, you've got too much, you can't go out in crowds, things like that. Right. So all of those are your fears that are preventing you from operating and living a normal life. Work on the fears. So if you're experiencing those things and you're trying to do psychic work or mediumship work, number one, you're not being responsible because you can be very destructive in a sitter's life by giving them information that's colored by your fears. This right. is so important. Um, when you are able to see the spirit world or information with neutrality, with and compassion, regardless mm -hmm. of what's happening, if you see, if you go into a house and you see like, oh, there's an axe murderer here or whatever, you're like, hey, oh, dude, you're cool. an axe murderer. Do I need to help you find your mommy? What do you um, need? <laughs> then you're ready. But if you're going, though, oh my gosh, that person was a murderer or whatever, then you're not ready. So yes. neutrality, neutrality, neutrality. You want to be Van Helsing because believe me, honey, it is fun. Oh, yes. To have no fear. Okay, so. I'd love to see some more truth bombs because yes. those are really fun. So again, if you are liking what we're dropping, hit the truth. Give me some. Hit the yes. like. Hit a comment. Um, is and that, subscribe is that if Ricky? you haven't yet. Ricky! Ah. And if it's really resonating, if you've had a personal experience with this where you've either been inundated and let the fear control you or you've worked through it, hit a truth bomb. And there's no shame because I've been one of those like scary. I know it's you, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to get into this next part, which is practicing. Practicing with people. Live people. So now you've done your sitting work, so you're starting to feel like Are the we changes. We're so live. You seeing the changes of like what it feels like when you've got a spirit that's not your body um, coming in and. Ah, Crystal found a bomb, dream. bomb, bomb. I love the Now bombs. you're going to practice with people. This is yes. step number three. Okay. And don't start with people that are paying you money. Start with friends and family. Mm -hmm. And they're friends that you don't know because it's good if you don't know anything about people. So you can that test yourself. Because yes. in the beginning, you're going to be afraid that you're going to make mm -hmm. mistakes. And you know what? You are because this is any other skill, you're going to make mistakes. Yes. You have to make mistakes to get better. You're going to fall off a bike before you learn how to ride it. So the important thing to learn about learning this kind of stuff is getting out of your own way. And especially when it comes to mediumship, we want to, uh, when, we're, when we're talking about messaging mediumship mm -hmm. especially, we want to look for the proof of identity, which yes. is called evidentiary mediumship. And how you get that is basically to get out of the way and let the information come to you. Right. And if you've got ego there, that's like, I have to be right. I have to be right. You know, I hope they don't think I'm stupid. Um, then you're really not going to get great information. You're going to be grasping for information mm -hmm. instead of just relaxing and letting it come to you and trusting the information. You're building the autopilot of information. Right. Let it be easy. Stop trying to make it so hard. So like we were talking about that psychic door that you're developing mm -hmm. in your sitting work, you open the psychic door at the beginning and then you close it when you're done and you step out. So you can have a normal life. So you're not one of these mediums that's walking around in public going <gasps> you know, at the grocery store and like, you're like, really? Because I'm just want to get some peas and go home and make some yeah. stir fry. So, so 
when you set up that stage, you can assume that when you're in that mode, right. any information that you get is not yours. It's a part of the session. It's a part of the reading. It's a part of the sitting. It's a part of this other individual story, whether they are a physical individual or whether it's a spirit individual. Right. <laughs> I love all this. I love We're your kind of funny sometimes, me. I guess. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, one, one thing to remember when you are um, give, starting to give readings of any kind, if it's, it's just a regular old psychic reading from person to person, or if you're practicing with mediumship, um, psychics don't see everything. So, because there's privacy settings in the spirit world, too. Just like Facebook. It's, it's no different. So, on TV, it's like they see everything. And you do sometimes see information that's just for your knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, but, and this is why you have to build up a sensitivity to what right. should be told and what shouldn't. Sometimes the information you're getting is so that you understand what the person is going through. Right. But then what you're supposed to give them is something... Simple, a little different, simple right. and like more ethical and tactful. So you really need to understand that you're giving people information that can change the course of their life in a way. So you right. really have to not be like, oh, you might get death might be coming or fear based right. messages. If you're if it's fear based, stop, step back and reassess and work on your fears right. before you go give anybody anything fearful. All messages should be of love and to help someone to lift them up and to improve their right. life. So um Psychics don't see everything. You're going to be given what uh, you, what the person needs, and that's it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, and it's going to be very efficient because the spirit information and spirit um, energy is extremely efficient. It will take the the fastest path to get to where it needs to get. Most of the time, that information will come in mentally before anything else. So emotions and um, and memories are really good. Um, all of these very subtle pieces and, and ways of getting information. The other thing to recognize is that there are so many different mediums and so many different psychics that everybody is going to pick up information differently. Mm -hmm. You are not wrong in the way that you pick up information. So what we've experienced when we do spirit, uh, when in the past when we've done right. groups. Especially in groups. Is that people will get kind of scared because they feel like this person is picking that, that up and I'm not picking it up. Or they're picking up everything and I'm picking up nothing. This little piece of... It, that that doesn't mean you're broken. It means you yes. may receive information differently than mm -hmm. this person. And your perception of how this person is receiving information may not be how they're actually picking it right. up. Right. The person might be receiving information through a feeling. Um, and but then, you think they're seeing. Uh, right. But they'll they'll relay it as, I feel like it's this. So the or, feeling might actually give them a picture. Right. Or I'm seeing it this way, even though they may not be seeing it. And spirits communicate differently, just yep. like people. Like some people are more visual, some people are more tactile. Mm -hmm. Spirits are no different. They're just people without bodies. Yes. So they're going to communicate in different ways. Um, the, they're people without people. Right. So they might like the easiest <laughs> way for them to do. Some people are like this. If they want to know somebody, they'll just go like this. I'm like, oh, and I see you people, feel like this. Some people that's very uncomfortable, so they're going to talk more. So uh, David and I have had the experience where we may be in doing a mediumship work in a house or for a person, and he'll receive certain things, and I'll receive certain things. Like if there was a gentleman, I'm thinking of an experience, where um, it, it, the, the guy resonated more with David because he mm -hmm. was more like a guy thing, then David would get the information. I'm like, I got mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah. I got nothing. Yeah. But like grandma with her cookies will be like, oh, honey. And I'm like, I got nothing. Do -do -do -do. And I got nothing. So it just, the spirit will choose who is the most receptive. That doesn't mean he's getting this, I'm not getting this. The, right. Your pride has nothing to do with it. The importance is the message and the comfort and the healing for the person. Right. So get out of your own way. Get out of the way. <laughs> okay. okay. So when do you know that you are ready for pro status? Van Helsing. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is this is when you're um, when you're getting pretty consistent information. When the mm -hmm. information that you've got coming in is pretty spot on most of the time. Um, you can toggle in and out. You can open and close your door. You have no fear. It doesn't matter what shows up, what story shows up. Whether it is the deepest darkest demon in the world, you can take off the costume and go. Okay, okay, Fred, I see you. <laughs> you're not a demon. Um, and when you have no worry or fear about being wrong, when you've got that compassionate neutrality, when you've got no fear, that's when you're ready. 
And really, there is nothing that can hurt you unless you come right. into a situation with fear. Then really, you're just hurting yourself. Right. Um, so working on your fear, like I said, the number one thing. Practice, 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 practice. practice, practice. practice, practice. So exactly. Okay, for a take off the mat. It's completely. You yeah, have totally. no idea how many situations we've been in where a person was, Scary I have demon. a demon. There's a demon. There's a demon. But let's see who that demon is. So by working with your gatekeeper... The, your go-to contact, you can have this person take off their costume, take off the mask, and get past the demon. Because if they're perceived as a demon and everybody keeps seeing them as a demon, nobody's going to help them. Right. So um, take off the mask and see what's underneath the story. We had a demon once mm -hmm. who this lady was dealing with, and it, it, we were like, well, let's take a look at it. Mm -hmm. And it turned out about to be this little boy with this scary mask on that just really wanted his mom to come pick him up. But so, he I mean, was so scared. That was the way the information came across. So you have to really look objectively at what you're seeing. Um, so that's, we'll get, that's a whole other live we're going to do because that's fun. Um, but the thing to practice is find people to practice with. So practice, 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 practice. And as you practice, notice any fears that come up. Fears that I'm wrong. Fears that you're making it up. And uh, fears that people's negative energy is going to get on you. That yes. the spirit's going to get stuck to you and you're going to take it home. Mm -hmm. Any of those things are indicative of a deeper fear that you have. An unresolved fear that you still need to work through. And this, this is an amazing thing because these fears that do come up are golden. Because they're telling you where you can make, take your next step and your right. next evolution. So if you are, uh, ex if you're exploring learning mediumship through some sort of system and that mm -hmm. system has a lot of fear-based stuff in it, stop it. That system sucks and find something that is not. Yes. Spiritualist mediumship is one of the best systems that I found. That's how I was trained mm -hmm. when I finally found the right information because uh, go to the elders that have already done this. Mediumship has been around since the beginning of time and people have created systems, compared right. notes and worked together and figured out how it works. Jesus not, was a medium. You're not reinventing the wheel here. Mm -hmm. um, so these things that we're giving you are tried and true right. systems of unfolding your mediumship. And this brings up another element, which is um, trust yourself. Trust yourself mm -hmm. above all else. You know if something is coming from fear, it'll usually feel heavy and constricted and, and make you like... <gasps> Well, if it goes there, that's fear. If it opens you up, if it relaxes you, if it goes, oh, that feels amazing. It's about time that I've, that I've finally found the information, about time that things are starting to make sense. That's coming from truth. Speaking of truth, if this is resonating with yes. you, more truth bombs. More drop truth, truth down below. Love and if you bombs. love this information, if you love this topic and you want to see more truth kinds bomb. of things like this, drop a truth bomb. So, yeah, you may, you may, oh, Ricky, I love you. We need to get together soon. Yes, yes, um, yes. So the thing is, if you are feeling fear and you have done your work, you will immediately go to, after a while, after practice, I'm feeling fear. I wonder who feels fear. Is it this person I'm reading feeling and the fear? Is it a spirit that's feeling fearful that needs a little bit of help? You see what she did there? I was actually thinking this a couple minutes ago to talk about it, and she already brought it up. That would be a psychic information. Right. We do that all the time. Yes. People yes, that yes, know yes. us know that. Okay. So now... We are to the bonus bonus round tip. Bonus tip. Okay, we're gonna give you a down and dirty way to process your fears as you are working. This is specifically for sensitive, intuitive, psychics, healers, mediums that are learning right. their skills. But it works for everybody because guess what? The root of all these fears, mommy, daddy issues, whatever, it all comes from a, a fear that's been there for a long time. And it's that's in, hiding. It's in you. It's an unresolved mm -hmm. issue that you haven't necessarily had the skill set or tools to to get down to or to work through yet. So um, the the th the issue comes up when we have these fears that color the read, that color the, the information that's coming in, and it gets all jumbled up and it ends up becoming a neurosis that may perhaps even get into a mental health issue. So here's what we find and here's why you work with a shaman until the shaman says that you're ready to work, okay, in the old school days. You work with a shaman, you work on your fears because the shaman or the, the whatever mage that you're working with is not going to let you go work with people until they see that you have mental and emotional stability. This is how you get it. Right. We've worked with mediums that have our natural mediums <clears throat> excuse me and have let these fears go for a very long time well what mm -hmm. happens is they start because they're working with the imagination facility where they're in that space where they're seeing and they're sensing in that space and the mind is a powerful thing so it will begin creating these fears for you so they will start to personify the, these fears and so they may have this 
uh, what we call a thought form that has become their their fear has become a thought form that they think is an actual evil entity, but it's really their fear has become personified. Right. So if you don't work on these things when you notice them and you continue working on your psychic gifts, it can get crazy and spin out of control right. and you're not helping right. anybody. So, and you're also your guides will abandon you. So you're going to be doing this on your own. And we've worked with a lot of mediums who are in their older uh, and and it's become a problem after years of ignoring their own fears. Right. So your guides will take a step back and let you go through that belief system that you're trying to develop, which is the fear. So if you want to go into the fear, your guides are like, okay, go ahead. We'll uh, be here when you're ready. Okay. So let's kind of quick go how through. Do we, how do we process that? How fear? do we get there? Um, first off is to find the fear. And like I said before, these are golden moments. Whenever you've got a fear that comes up, um, some of the common ones are, am I good enough? which would be a rejection element. Uh, people think I'm crazy. That would be an abandonment element. Or am I wrong? What if I'm wrong? That's going to be a judgment element. So let's say that you're giving a reading for someone and you're like, oh my gosh, what if I'm wrong? Okay. Right. Um, then you stop and you leave when you're done and you go home and you go, okay, I had this fear come up that I Maybe thought I that I was, I was wrong or what if they think I'm crazy? You look at that. Okay. Judgment. I was afraid of judgment. Okay. So you're going to define that fear a little better. You're going to go, okay, what was my fear? And then what category does it kind of fit into? Right. And then you're going to, in your own time, this you could do it in your sitting work if you want, explore right. that fear. You're going to go back through your life, starting from the fear that you're mm -hmm. giving the reading, I, I was afraid that they thought I was wrong. Um, you're going to go back through your life, maybe, and, and notice places where you had that same fear. Right. And the, the incidents that come up might not have anything to do with maybe that directly, Um but your mind is a powerful thing. And if right. you set the intention that you want to work on this fear and you go back through life, you go back to these different memories and times and moments in your life, let your mind bring the right ones to the surface mm -hmm. and it'll bring it from one to another. And it may seem like it's bouncing around, but it's really getting to the point until you get to that one specific memory as you go back to your earliest memory that you felt the same type of fear. And usually that is the one that is the root issue, the root memory that you need to work through. And do that in your sitting work or do that with right. a um, with a professional if you need to. Right. I mean, if the fear, usually when you do this kind of exercise and you start charting these little pain points in your mm -hmm. history, like, oh, that made me, oh, I was really embarrassed or I was ashamed or humiliated right. in front of people and made to feel stupid. And if this... you can pinpoint those, usually they will start to unravel on their own. Right. Because this brings us to the next point, which is that awareness leads to release. Right. Just by being aware of what the issue is, your mind will start to go, okay, we no longer need that program. We can rewire it. Um, and all you're doing is creating a way in your mind to, um, for example, do or say what you couldn't in that particular memory. Or right. to create a story or a construct in your mind to take back anything that was taken from you. And then rinse and repeat. Yes. Because your fears will continue to pop up yes. as you do this kind of work until and you get to the point where you're just, oh my gosh, it's so much fun. But no matter how good you get, there will always be another level to work on. But understanding that the things that come up are kind of an automatic, they've, they've been there for so long that they're a def they were trying to protect you. They're a defense mechanism mm -hmm. to keep you safe from that original memory where you were made to feel stupid. Mm -hmm. So your fears come up to leave. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. You can't expose yourself or be vulnerable right. because then you'll feel stupid again. So those are very real fears to work on. Like I said, those are not separate from the psychic, fun, magical work that you're doing. Those are intrinsic and important if you want to be ethical, responsible, and effective. Right, yes. right, right. Um, okay, so let's see. Okay, so once again, if you are loving this, hit the love button, or um, if you haven't yet, hit that thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't, because we've got much more content coming your way. And uh, um, also, what else? if you haven't already downloaded it, there is below a link to uh, a Discover 7 Yeah, I think blocks. it's up here. Wherever I'm pointing. It's either Anyway, up there it's a or up free here. course that is Discover Seven Blocks to Finding Your Life Purpose. And really, it's Down going. Below in the contents. There's a lot of these fears that we kind of uh, pinpoint that'll help you kind of uncover fears in your life. I mean, it's and not. That's a, that's it, a, a pretty, a pretty in depth course on um, Seven Blocks to Your Life Purpose. Yeah, so go and get it. So it's, it's, it's a video course. It's going to be awesome. It'll give you some aha moments and some directions to like kind of see where your fears are. And really that's, that's for your whole life. It's not just right. about if, 
Uh, ooh, there's a good question. Mm-hmm. So actually, Christy Peterson, who is precogging the fact that we are now going to questions, yep. we are going to answer some questions. So Christy, you so, had a question? Yes. Uh, so now it is Q&A time. So if you've got your questions, drop them in the comments, and I'll be over here. Um, oh, yes, 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 yes. Heather is finishing a book. Yes. Drop them, drop them. The yes. Okay. I'm book. finishing a book. It should be done in January or February. Um, it's called how to be spiritual as fuck a no bullshit guide to inner peace. And it's really stripping away all of the no bullshit. And can I pre-order today? No, but we've got your number girl, <laughs> but it's going to be a lot of fun. It's, it's very humorous. I know and, you are. And, um, David's got a lot of truth bombs in there. He's like the truth bomb King who like, who brings it so it's going to be a lot of fun oh and this is where we're going to start tracking the comments for the crystal giveaway yes 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 so yes. um we're going to kind of roll the dice and count up it'll through... be it'll be a random a random pull from the comments so when we get to the comments area then i'll i don't want to do it yet no not yet no, we're not going to yet. answer okay. questions but go ahead and um, keep okay, commenting because so we're going to scroll up says, what crystal is best for helping with spiritual development ah okay um, I would have to say this one, which is why we chose it. Labradorite. It is the most protective mineral in the animal kingdom. In the, in the animal mineral kingdom. kingdom. Yes. It is the most protective animal in the mineral kingdom. Labradorite mm-hmm. is really good when you're learning to get through. One of my favorites, Crystal Peterson says, Crystal Peterson. Crystal Peterson. <laughs> wow. Christy, well, Christy, Christy and Peterson, Crystal are right next to Christy each other. Christy Peterson right. and Crystal Ford just commented right next to each other. Right. So your team is tight. That's what it tells me. You're so right. Labradorite basically um, is very protective and kind of like helps dissipate negative energies. So as you are learning to work through your fears, Labradorite is super excellent at helping you stay grounded and centered. Because yes, you're gonna you're not expected to be Van Helsing out of the gate. You're gonna have fears. You're gonna need some extra help. So crystals really are awesome. Crystals and crystal are is really magical. Awesome. And crystal is really magical. Yeah, no, they do. They have properties that, no, that she. help you stay grounded. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking about crystal fungus. Oh, the crustaceans. Yeah. Oh, you guys oh, are so Oh, that's cute. awesome. Just that's call awesome. us the crustaceans. Yep. I, I wouldn't call that codependency. Also, citrine is really good. This is a piece of raw citrine. is also in the crystal giveaway mm-hmm. package. And yep. citrine is really good at keeping you clear. Yes, it is so, a natural clearing stone. That so you're clear. asking what are some really good crystals? I filled a in the giveaway. huge giveaway. Yes. So this giveaway um, is around a $200 value because we're like doing it up. And we're going to do a crystal giveaway every month when we do our live. Right. So we've got another question, and that mm-hmm. is, um, what are some books? What are some good recommended oh, books? Oh, okay. Uh, one of my favorite no bullshit books is um, by Rita Berkowitz. <laughs> It's, it's either the Idiot's Guide or the Dummy's Guide to Spirit Communication. I think it's the Idiot's Guide to Spirit Communication. She's a wonderful medium. Um, she's a painting medium. So she'll see things and she'll paint them. But she's, Which is a cool skill set. But she's really good. And other than the course that we're writing, because we're creating a master course on right. mediumship that is going to be out within the next six months. Um, okay, okay, so next one is, what is a good way to ground yourself and cut off energy when working with others? Labradorite. Labradorite is really Labradorite. Good. Or black tourmaline. So a technique, a technique to deal with this is uh, basically um, mirrors. Mirrors are really good for um, protecting yourself and kind of bouncing back anything that doesn't belong to you. And that's an imaginary mirror. Yes, imaginary. Right. I mean, if you want to carry a little mirror in your pocket and go, hey, um, so, that'll work too. So a couple of things to address with this is that um, black tourmaline is really good for me that I use when I'm working or doing the healing work because it helps dissipate energy. Um, But the most important grounding uh, tool you have is love Um, because fear does not stick to love. Crap does not stick to love. Love is the highest vibration. If every, if you train yourself to come at love with everything, and this is the part of getting rid of the fears because fear and love cannot coexist. So when you have the fear come up, step back and start working on that fear and just the love will ground you more than everything. And the practical stuff of just, Put your feet in the ground and connect <laughs> to Mother Earth. Okay, so we've got Greg that says, "Where can I buy love?" Um, that's a that's a pretty at the love lighthearted store. at the love store. In, Which in, in Vegas, Las Vegas, the love store is an adult. store. We actually have it's the called love the love store. store. It's a chain. So you can go buy some love at the love store. So yes, that would be my um, recommendation. Okay, uh, let's see. In the, six, okay the six us... pack, they're just <laughs> different flavors. Oh boy, um, is it okay to let a spirit linger <laughs> in my home? I can communicate with him through a dragon blood pendulum. He says he doesn't want my help to move on. 
It depends on the spirit. Right. And this is something that uh, that is really helpful to have your gatekeeper or your spirit guides to kind of um, help you answer those particular questions because it's on a a case by case basis. Right. Um. If the spirit is is in is um infringing on your free will or causing issues, then you can have your spirit guides put Vacuum them in a timeout. Them out. Yes. Because it's your house. Um. You wouldn't let a troublemaker in your house if it's just somebody hanging out and you're cool with it. Then. You know, you can maybe have a conversation. They're watching you and they're mm-hmm. kind of learning stuff. Um, we have boundaries and we have our roof is our waiting room. So you can have a designated waiting room. <laughs> I know that sounds, it, it's just, it just works. So remember you have okay. boundaries. Uh, another okay. question? We might have uh, time for one more question yeah, before it says, we... Uh, da-da-da-da. How difficult was it to transition from doing readings on family and friends to becoming professionals? And do you have any recommendations? Practice, 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 practice. It's going to naturally happen. You will know when you're ready. Yep. If you're still working on family and friends and you have that pull or impulse to start doing it, take a look first at your fears and take a look at if you can be neutral. If a demon showed up in your face, could you go, hey, how you doing? Right. Um, and that, uh, honestly, that translates into, are you intimidated by real life right, people? Right. So it's no different. Um, right. Because when you're doing this kind of work, you're working with people as well as spirits. Because spirits don't people. pay your bills. They're all people. Spirits won't pay right. your bills. Right. People pay your bills. Right. Working on spirits for people, that helps pay your bills as long as the people that you're working for pay your bills. You know, most of all, it is just, just be fun. Just have fun with it. Be fun. Have fun with it. Um, what are you at? Okay. Ask questions. Okay, right. so I think that's about all that's the time good for, for the questions. questions but um, we do want to. What's next? We okay. do you want to tell. Okay, who's got who's the crystal giveaway? You need to, uh, let's go with number eight. He's so gonna one, pick a number. two, three, four, five, six. Scroll. Seven and eight. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, so that would be how did you do that christy freaking peterson christy peterson you, how did you do that i don't know <laughs> i don't know i don't know how she did it she's magic she kept commenting absolutely i mean that's how that's how you do she's it she's magical she says ha, ha ha i thought so that is clear yes i knew she knew it see spirits should cover the ghastly or the ghastly bill or ghostly bill <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, Christy Peterson. Okay, so okay. Um, Christy Peterson, go what ahead and hit us up. What was the number eight? Yeah, it was number okay. eight, uh, which is the number for infinity as well. Okay. So Christy Peterson, uh, go ahead and hit us up uh, privately and we'll get your, we, we need your information. We'll get you and our we'll, information. We'll, we'll get that to we'll you. We'll send you this So magical. congratulations to Christy Peterson. Yes. Thank you guys. Oh, oh you were wow. born on the 8th of June. That is awesome. Magical, awesome, awesome. magical Gemini. See how she did that? She's right? like, I'm getting the crystal package. Exactly, because it's for me. So we're going to do this every, every month, give yes. away a crystal so package. So once again, so. if you liked this, comment below. If you really liked it and you want some more, hit a truth bomb. If you yes. have any other topics that you want, comment below and we will put that on the list for one of the a future, a future live events. A future live. We're going to be doing a live every month with a huge crystal giveaway. We are loving this. It's so much yes. fun because bringing this right information is so important. Um, follow us on social. Um, there's so much more to learn. We, we are, gave you an outline. This is just the tip of yes. the iceberg. There's a big iceberg. And please Huge. leave your questions about anything about mediumship, yes, yes, yes. any pain points that you have about psychic information, spirits that are stuck. Yes. We got the answers and for you. For those of you who missed the live event and who are watching this after, um, comment below any of your questions and we will continue monitoring the questions and comments Absolutely. and we will continue answering those questions as we keep going. Okay. Uh, make sure to follow us on social at Zen Rose Garden across the board. Subscribe if you have not. Hit that like button below if you have not. Yeah. And we will... We are going to come out with a video on Tuesday. So be sure to tune in on Tuesday when the next video comes out on some cool topic. On some cool topic. (laughs) And make sure you hit that bell for the notifications when we go live and when we post a new video. Um, So aside from that, I think we are done. We are wrapped up. Thank you guys for joining us. And we will catch you next time. We love you. Enjoy. That's it.